shout that out for eternity. Shout with the voice of triumph. 
it out. Shout it out. Don't stay silent. Thank you, Lord. You know that the one that is in you is greater than anything that can come against you in this world. And that is something to shout about. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
the opportunity of being on you and me in America's prayer meeting. Can we have a little bit more in the mind? Thank you. Just can't hear myself. And I uh, had quite a number of different people calling in. It was a three and a half hour program. And uh, they said, hello, I watched you and me in America's prayer meeting broadcast. You prayed for many sick people. You told some to email for a prayer cloth. Can you send me a prayer cloth? I have an incredible, excuse me, incurable infection in my blood. I must confess that I have been given over to living a life of promiscuous lifestyle. I ask Jesus to forgive my sins. Please pray that Jesus will forgive me and heal me of all my diseases. Regards, Brother Ken. So I want to just go ahead and uh, do that while the anointing is moving. And uh, Pastor James, Pastor Miss, Pastor Steve, come on up. Pastor Dwayne, please. We're going to lay hands. And can you guys stretch out your hands? Many people called that day, and they're requesting for prayer clause. One brother called, and he said, I, I lost my wife of 12 years, and I still am not over it. You know, that just sometimes needs some counseling. Amen. I believe this brother has a spirit of uh, condemnation on him. And so, uh, Pastor Steve, can you just pray for them? Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you said that you were merciful and gracious and your tender mercies are over all your works. You said you forgive all our iniquities and heal all our diseases. Lord, that doesn't, doesn't uh, eliminate anything, but it includes all. So we thank you. We curse this blood disease in Ken's body. We curse whatever sin may have caused or whatever reason. We command the blood of Jesus to cleanse him, and to flow through him, and to effect a healing and a cure from this moment that he gets this cloth, that the anointing goes in because the prayer of faith and the agreement has been prayed, and it drives out all Satan had wrought. In Jesus' mighty name, we agree and say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we praise the Lord? you in any way, yes. then let's lift both hands and say, Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! You're a mighty God! It's the day we get to celebrate what you have done for us. Our heart is filled with gladness and our tongue with singing and we can shout among the congregation, the Lord has done great things in us! We're in with our God! Hallelujah! We're not sad, but we're glad, praise God! He's always moving, isn't he? He's always doing something good, praise God! Well, there's a sweet flow here. Don't you love Hearts of Fire today? And from the fire, I love that. Heart of Fire, from the fire, meshing together. And if you didn't get a chance to see from this fire, this is a little taste of sweet victory. Amen? And uh, they go out into the highways and the byways. And they compel people to know the Lord. They're not going to probably be at the local Baptist church. They're probably going to be at the local uh, heavy metal concert. <laughs> but if they aren't um, reached, how will they hear? And if they're not sent and they don't go, how will they know? Amen? And if all we ever do is witness to people that we already are friends with and we already know and we're all in the same bathtub using the same soap, <laughs> then how will we ever get them saved? Amen? And so I appreciate from this fire, yes, stepping in and uh, sharing the fire today. Amen. And how about we go around and love on people? Praise the Lord. Good to see you guys. Hallelujah. Good to see some of those new faces. Good to see Michaela, Jillian, and Miss Cheryl. It's always good.
We just want to formally greet you. We promise we won't send you any junk. And, you know, I just wanted to let you know that our offices are open five days a week, okay? And if you ever need to call us, we're available. Miss Jan. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm going to do this really quick because it just came to my mind when pastors were praying, we're all praying over the prayer cloth, you know. Almost five years, this October. I almost died. And I have a prayer cloth. I still have my prayer cloth. Now, I'm healed, but I still have my prayer cloth. And I want to just encourage you, if you are fighting with anything, the Word of God tells us, if any among you is sick, yes. tell to the elders that they could pray, pray with you. know what would have Pastor Steve and Terry, and they hadn't come in, and the body of Christ hadn't started to pray for me. I had faith, but you know what? I needed my pastors. They're my over. They are over me. In Jesus Christ's stead, until He comes back, they are my shepherds. It's so important to call the pastors. If you are sick, if you're fighting anything, call the pastors. And David, do you have more? That's all. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, announcements, my favorite part. Okay, what is tonight? Tonight is no service tonight, it's family night. We know what we do, what's the drill? Right, spend time with your family in the same room. Whatever it is, chick flick, you watch the movie with your wife. If your kid likes video games, spend some time with your child in video games. Whatever it is, if it's sports, maybe women fake it like you like it and maybe sit there and watch a game. I know that's hard. Okay, next Sunday, September 4th, a.m., Word of Power graduates. I am a Word of Power graduate. They're uh, doing their graduation. This is their fifth graduating class. Hallelujah! It's going to be nice, very nice. My son is one of them. I'm very excited. Okay, Thursday, we're going to call this Invited Friend Hour of Power. We're encouraging you to invite somebody. Everybody knows we need some ladies, ladies, come on. Do I have to call security in the back? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, invite somebody. Everybody knows they have somebody that might need some help. And they need, I know I have some people that need some help, you know, and they might not want to admit it. And how else to help somebody with the word of God, right? All right, what time is it now? Overflow! Overflow. You? Pastor Sherry. <laughs> Invite a friend Thursday. You know, sometimes people won't come on a Sunday morning because there's too many people, too much of a crowd. I don't want people to know my situation. I'm going through a hard time. Well, good. That's what the church is for. And so we've arranged the service where it's a little bit more intimate. We've turned off some of the lights, made a little bit of a smaller setting. And people have, you know, there's awesome things going on in the King's Kids. They're learning about missions right now. And the youth is always hopping. And um, invite them. Because how will they know unless we invite them? Amen? I was invited somewhere, sometime. And when I was invited to the church that God called me to, a Word of Faith church, I'd never heard the word Word of Faith in my life. And it opened up the whole destiny of God for my life. And I thank God for someone inviting me. Amen? Praise the Lord. Are you out there? Is this on? I feel like that guy's on Monster Inc. Is this on? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is God good today? Can you turn to your neighbor and say, he's good. He has been good to me. Turn to your other neighbor and say, he's better than good. He's awesome. He's a hundred proof awesomeness, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to go over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I was really desiring to not preach Pastor Steve's sermon. And uh, so I'm trying to avoid those classic prosperity verses. And, uh, you know, as I was thinking about um, after praying for the prayer cloth we did, one of the things that I noticed in... Uh, television that um, after I preach the word for a good 20 minutes and then after that they call on for prayer and it goes on until you, you could pray till the morning and they never stop calling and one of the things that it talks about over here in um, Matthew I know you're going in Romans 8 right yes. all right I'm just going to read it to you real quickly out of Matthew because one of the things that we have to say is we've got to be careful with what we say. Amen? We are what we say. You hear me now? You are what you say because what you say is what you think. So you what someone is thinking because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is eventually going to speak. Right? And so it says over here in, in Matthew chapter 6, and he says, Look over here at the birds of the air, verse 26. They do not sow, neither do they reap, but gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you, say it to your neighbor, are you not worth more than? Say it with conviction. Are you not worth it more than them? There you go. Thank you. And which of you, being anxious, anxious, worried, fretful, can add a single cubic to your life? No, on the contrary, you lose a few. Come on. Once you start worrying about what are we going to do, what's going to happen, the mind just will not shut up, and what will happen is you will start to lose 
life, not gain life. Amen? And we, and why are you anxious about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. Do they not sow or toil? Yet I say that even Solomon in all of his glory cannot change, cannot clothe himself like them. Amen? And then he goes on in verse 31, and don't be anxious, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Amen. Don't worry. Amen. Refuse to worry. Amen. Refuse to gripe, complain, and grumble. Amen. Because we become a product of that. And he says, and this is where it was on the television broadcast, be anxious or take no thought in saying. In saying. And as I began to minister, the whole thing began to turn around. Where they were calling and they were crying in the root beer, they began to turn around because God is an awesome God. Yeah. And, and faith begins where the will of God is known. And if we don't understand what the will of God is, then we need to find out what the Word says about it. Well, if He says, I'm prosperous, then I'm going to side with what God says. Amen. I'm not going to side with what my feelings say. Amen? And so as we begin to go on, they begin to hear, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing, right? Yeah. Hearing, yeah. and hearing the Word of God. And so when we hear the Word of God, it changes the circumstances all about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so over there in Romans chapter 8, I want to give you the Word of God about hearing what He said about us. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Verse 1, there's there now for now say now no condemnation free we're free today if that's all you get today then you get it because we're free who's going to lay a charge to god's elect who even cares about what people say about you what the devil says about you how you're not going to make it how you're not going to get your bills paid well you can just bank on when he says that, then it's going to be opposite. Yeah, right? Amen. Refuse to let him talk to you at the night time and you can't go to sleep. He's a liar. Amen. Don't listen to him. Amen. 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 Right. And then it says, for the law of the spirit of life. 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 And Christ Jesus has yeah. made us free. Yeah. You can preach on that. Are you free today? Yeah. Be free today. Don't let anything entangle you. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free. Right? Amen. And so he's talking about Christ Jesus. He's not talking about your beautifulness. Or how you were born into the right family or the wrong family. God delights in taking people on the wrong side of the tracks and blessing them. Amen. Right? And then he'll get the glory for it. Right? And then he goes on and he's talking about the love of God. I love that. Aren't you glad? Yeah. And then he goes on in verse 19. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing. Say the revealing. revealing. Of the sons of, God. the sons of God. So that means we need to act like a child of God. Amen. Right? Amen. Child, ch children, as my dad could not say children, he'd have to say children. Children <laughs> should act like their parents. Believe me, they're going to. They're going to do more of what they see than what you said. That's right. Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it sure is. All right. <laughs> and so we want to act like what he did, right? Yeah. Oh, he said yeah. it, but he did it. He, he proved it. Yeah. Look over here in verse 31. This is what we want to get to. And then... And then shall we say to all these things, what things? If God, say God, God. is for me. for me, is he for you? Yes. I'm sorry, you just aren't helping me at all. you got to step it up. Yeah. Is he for you? Yeah. Let me tell you, if you can't preach to yourself, you're not going to get out of a wet paper bag. you got to have con conviction and confidence, right? One of the things you got to do, like Pastor Duane was talking about Thursday night, is look in the mirror and say, I belong to God. God's inside of me. And when you get out and the world is around you, all you see is they're saying this and they're saying that and they're, they're looking at you like this, but God's on the inside of you. Yes. And you think like God. Yes. You walk like God. Yes. You smell like God. Yes. You talk like God. Yes. You feel like God. Not in the sense of you, I am God. You feel like I am an anointed one. Yes. That when I go and lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Yes. 
that I walk into a store and someone's oppressed, they will be free. Yes. Right? That when I walk into the room with all my haters, I'm free. Amen. Because haters are going to hate. That's what they do. But when we are free, then we can love anybody. Amen? Amen? Amen. And nothing's going to hinder us and push us down. And he says, well, tribulation, well, persecution, well, nakedness, famine. No! Will nakedness and famine separate? Come on, I'm asking you a question. Will nakedness and famine separate you from the love of God? We've got to know that we know that we know that we know. He loves us. Yes. He loves me. Amen. He loves you. And God has a way to love you in such a way that you know that you are his very favorite. Amen. Right? Yes. And, and, and I love to say it. Say it after me. I'm God's favorite. God's favorite. Yeah. You know why I like to do that? Because I can tell the pulse of the room. You can tell. I'm God's favorite. Yes. They, know, they know God's favorite. Well, I'm God's favorite. They don't know God that they're God's favorite. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Amen. Amen. And so if, if you don't preach to yourself, you may not get free. Come on. Right. That's good word. Because if the word abides in you, right? Yes. Then what happens? Then you can ask anything and it shall be done for you. Yes. So really the, the greatest thing that we learned, we learned in King's Kids, that Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, right? What are you going to do with that? You, you, nothing can come against the love of God. Inferiority, nothing can come against the love. Depression, nothing can come. Poverty, nakedness, famine, what they say is going to happen. You know what? We're going to walk through this and we're going over to the other side. The whole New Testament was filled with Jesus overcoming situations, storms, poverty, lack, depression, inferiority, right? And, and what happened? Pride, pride. He came against that. And he said, I will go over to the other side. As I saw my father, I will act like him. Has your father been good to you? What I see that he did is he died on the cross for me. And it says that there is nothing that is ever going to separate us from that love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And I love the story. I told it last week. I'm going to tell it again. I love it because uh, Jerry Savell, he has children. And his daughter is full grown and has children older than my children. And children. And uh, he, his daughter saw this in the store. And she goes, oh, this is such a beautiful, I guess it was jewelry something. And, uh, and he says, oh, where was it? I'll get it for you. And... Um, she says, oh, no, Dad, don't get it for me. Well, later on in the day, he called her up. He goes, I got it. Yep. And she says, I said, don't get it for me. Why did you get it for me? He says, I just can't help myself. I love you too much. Oh, praise God forever. Isn't that our Father God? Yes. He just can't help himself. He died on the cross through Jesus. Amen. Yes. He died on the cross. He just couldn't help himself. He loves us that much. How is he not going to deliver you from whatever you're going through today? Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we got a good father? He, like the song says, he's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. Say, he's a good, good father. Now, I'm expecting to hear a little bit more volume and, and persuasion when I say I. Let's say it. I. God's favorite. Wow, look at how the word just broke something right there. What a Amen. difference. Amen. How about we lift our offering to the Lord? He's so good. He's so good. Amen. And you know what? He can't help but bless us when we can't help but bless him. It's a good love affair, is it not? Father, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of the kingdom of God. We're your children. Only you could have thought that. Only you could have come up with a plan that the only way to save mankind is to adopt them and, and pull them in and make them your own family. 
Thank you for causing us to be sons and daughters of God. And as we come into the house of God, we can go into the refrigerator and eat prosperity. We can pull out the peanut butter and say, ooh, this is good. We taste and see that the Lord is good, and he fills us, and he fills our life with good things, and he adds no sorrow. And so right now, we take our dominion and we use our authority because we are king's kids, and we bind up every hindrance right now over our finances, over our mind, over our bodies, over our families. Devil, you go in the name of Jesus. If you haven't been told to go, we're telling you to go now in Jesus' name. And we call in the monies from the north, south, east, and west. Thank you that we're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. And everything we put our hand to is blessed coming in and blessed going out. Amen? Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, come on. Obviously, you know, we, we have a protocol of bringing your tithe up, so bring it up if you can. We have Missionary Sunday today, just in case you didn't remember. Why did it 
covers us His love is fierce, His love is strong It is furious His love is sweet, His love is wild And His waking hearts to die coming and is to know that his love is in you the bible says love covers a multitude of sins Amen. it means it doesn't take into account a wrong suffer it doesn't uh it's not touchy it's not fretful um it believes all things about people good things bears all things hopes all things and endures all things and uh, I thank God for the love of God in the body of Christ. Because I know that a lot of folks have had to endure a lot with me. <laughs> and um, I'm just trying to pay it forward. And we mess it up, all of us at times. And we just, the greatest thing we can do is regroup and humble ourselves and just keep on going and keep on serving the Lord. Amen. Because he's good to us. Amen, and he's worthy of our praise, praise and, and um, worthy of us honoring him and his people. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Well, I'm going to continue to teach on prosperity. The choice is ours. And, you know, everything really in the Bible boils down to a choice. Amen. We choose either to live for God or we choose to live for ourselves, or we choose to believe his word and receive his blessings, which are there for us already, or we reject them. But God gives us the choice. You know, if we didn't have the power of choice, then all the blessings that we got would not really be um, considered blessings because he would make us either be blessed or make us be cursed. But we choose, and he gives us the power of choice. Yeah. And that is the most powerful thing that we'll ever have. We can choose to love. We can choose to be kind. Amen? And so the Bible talks about that the strongest we're actually in. Say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes what he says, shall have whatsoever he says. And um, there are some qualifications for that. We don't just say words and, and think that things are going to change. If we'll change in line with God's will and his word, then when we speak those words, we'll have confidence. And that confidence will be that we've made a 100% decision. 
that Jesus is Lord and we're going to serve him with all our heart. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, I just thank you for the holy written word of God. We thank you, Lord, that your word is life unto those that find it. It's health to all our flesh. It's prosperity to those that believe it. Lord, that the word of God is inspired. It was spoken by holy men of God of old when they were moved by the Holy Spirit. It's God breathed, God indwelt. And it is your very life and nature that is in this word, Lord. And we thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit that's come to indwell us and teach us and lead us and guide all truth and all agreement said. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, if we could, I uh, would like to first, I would like to go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Right after Mr. Kings or Samuels or whatever, somewhere around. <laughs> Mr. Kings, Samuel, Mr. Kings, and then Mr. Chronicles. And then I want to start Second Chronicles chapter 20. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, um, in this situation in Second Chronicles 20, there was a prof there was a prophet that showed up and gave a word, um, and Hezekiah was terrified because enemies were coming after him. He was the king of Israel at the time. But Hezekiah was smart because he called for the real prophet of God. He called for a true prophet. And the prophet came and gave him a word because what he did is he went before the Lord, Hezekiah did, and spread out the, the commandments before God and, and began to plead with the Lord, you know, over, Lord, spare us from these evil people, that they will not destroy our nation. Hezekiah was a man of the word. It talks about that. And a man of faith. And, and then he said, call for a prophet. And the prophet came. And in those days, a prophet was equivalent to the word of God. Now, if they missed it, they were a false prophet. Uh, but the prophets that are in this Bible were not false prophets. Um, and so what he said here, unless you read about that. But what he said, this prophet, he was talking about what the outcome of this uh, time would be. Now, let me uh, say something to you. There is a prophetic word that's in the body of Christ right now. And I know that God spoke to me, and I've hooked up with it, and other people are speaking up or hooking up with it. And the prophetic word is that God is going to cancel millions and millions of dollars worth of debt in this day and age. In the house of God, amen? And we're in the house of God, aren't we? And that God is going to reverse the curse off the body of Christ. And he's going to do that even in the midst of seeming famine around us. Because the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And there's a time of releases at hand. Because at the end of times... There needs to be the money needs to go into the hands of those that will use it right. Yes. And he's not going to cancel all our debts and give us wealth to go back in debt. Amen. And if we have, this is a good message because we'll get back out. Amen. And he'll bless us again. Amen. He's a God of a second chance. Yes. And if we're in debt now, this will be a good word for you because it will give you principles to come out of debt. Amen. And to stay out. And, uh, but the thing is, is that this word is that God will cancel debts by the multi-millions in the body of Christ. And God needs us to have cash at hand to preach the gospel yes. and, to, and to have the equipment we need to go around the world and, and set people free. Because when the time gets short, uh, the Lord wants to move. Yes. And he wants to get the word out as much as he can, as quickly as he can. And uh, so, remember, the, the money, when it comes in, is not just to bless us, 
He loves us and he wants us blessed. Amen. He doesn't want to leave you without any good thing, he said. He'll give every good thing to those that walk uprightly. Amen. But then there's going to be plenty left over. That's right. And that plenty should go out to someone else to help them. Amen. Whether it be the poor, whether which are all over the third world countries. Uh, but it should go to help needy people. Yes. And people that will receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so in this situation... They were uh, about to be in horrible debt uh, if these people got a hold of them. And so it was jo Jehoshaphat was the, was the guy, I mean the king, I was saying Hezekiah. But Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem, verse 5, chapter 20. And their Lord, uh, and in the presence of the Lord, the God of our fathers, and then he said, Art thou not God in the heavens, and art not thou the ruler of the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in thy hand, so that no one can stand against thee. Didst thou not our God drive all the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel, and give it to the descendants of Abraham forever and ever? You know you're a descendant of Abraham? It says that in Galatians that he that believes in God and has faith in God is the descendant of Abraham. If you have faith like Abraham and believe his word, then you're faith children. Amen? Amen. And so it says the inhabitants of this land before the people Israel and give it to the descendants of Abraham. So there's a wealth transformation that's uh, taken place with Abraham's children. And not only is he going to bless us, but he's going to give uh, our, his descendants blessings Amen. and so then he talked about verse 12 our God wilt thou not judge them for we are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us um, down against us nor do we know what to do but our eyes are on thee Amen. say that his eyes are on thee his eyes are on thee so right now he goes straight to God when you're in a financial crunch or the enemy's trying to destroy your finances, go to God. Amen. Ask God for a word, and he will give you one personally. Yes. He might say, Look, go to this scripture, and you can read that and use that to stand on. Or he might give you a personal word about your finances and give you some direction over it. But so... And then verse 14, it says, In the midst of the assembly, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, verse 14, and Benaniah, the son of Jeziel, the son of Benaniah, and the Levite, the son of Asaph. And he said, Listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Amen. Many people are fighting the battle to be blessed instead of letting God do it. That's right. Trusting the word Amen. that God said, so God will. Amen. And so he's saying, don't get in the care over your finances or over your lives. Amen. He said, you know, hear that, you know, behold, the Lord your God is going to deliver you from evil. Amen? So don't be dismayed because of the great multitude for the battle is not yours, but it's whose? God's. Whose? God's. Amen. And then it said, tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come up in the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley in the front of the of wilderness. Now God can tell you specific instructions many times of how to overcome your enemy. And then it says here in verse 20, uh, they rose early in the morning and they went to the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went out and Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, put your trust in the Lord your God and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed or be successful. And when he had consulted with these people, he appointed those who sang for the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire as they went out before the army and said, Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness 
is everlasting. Amen. Now, I don't know if you see it this way, but what it's really, what he's really doing, and this isn't an instruction from the prophet, he just knows this. He says, send the praisers out in front as if they've already got the victory. Yeah. Amen. We got to go out in front and start to proclaim we've already got yeah. the blessings. Ooh, yeah. He already gave us all blessings in every yeah. spiritual place and yeah. heavenly places in Christ and on the earth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And praise so we God. need to proclaim praise to the Lord and thank Him that the blessings are on the way. They're coming. Yes. Not maybe they will or, uh, Lord, I don't know how. I can't figure this out, how it's going to happen. Don't bother with that. Amen. Just act on the word and praise the Lord. And so he said, go out before them. Because, you know, you can't change your life anyway. That's right. But praise can change a situation. Amen. When you praise God in spite of the circumstance, God will take that praise and he will whip the devil with it. See, the praise of God confounds the works of darkness. Amen. Praise confounds the works of yes. darkness. So they begin to do that word. And the power and the presence of God begun to come. Amen. Amen. Verse 22. And they began singing and praising the Lord, setting ambushes. And the Lord set ambushes. Yeah. Say, the Lord set them. Yes, hallelujah. The Lord set ambushes against the sons of Am, Moab, and Mount Seor, who had come up against Judah, so they were routed. For the sons of Ammon and Moab rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seor, destroying them completely. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Seor, they uh, helped destroy one another. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is what the devil and his kids do when you're praising the Lord over a situation. They have, you know, or the situation, the devil, demons don't know how to do anything but fight when they, they're confused. So they just can't even get near your stuff and the angels are hanging around just whipping on them because angels are, you know, magnets to the word of the Lord and your praise. And so, they were destroying each other. They didn't. Judah was just praising the Lord. They were going, hallelujah, it's done. Amen? Amen. And so it said, when Judah, verse 24, came to look out of the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and behold, there are all corpses on the ground, and no one had escaped. God. No one. God. It means no devil or no circumstance can escape your praise. Amen. They have to bow to it. Amen. Amen. So it's the, the power of praise that defeats the spirit yes. of poverty and death and, and all these things. And then it says, and Jehoshaphat and his people came, verse 25, to, to take up the spoil. Which, and they found much among them, including goods, garments, valuable things, which they took for themselves, more than they could carry. And it took them three days. Yeah. Say three days. Three days. To take the spoil. Take the Boy. Because there was too much. Because there was too much. Amen. Praise God. Faith takes too much. Amen. Ooh, glory. And what I want us to see here is, first of all, why would God give them more than just enough? Uh, just enough? Why wouldn't he just give them enough? No, because God is a God of more than enough. Yes. And for whatever the enemy gives you trouble in your life, whatever area, God is going to give you three times the blessing. Not the double, but the triple. Hallelujah. And it, glory to God. Amen. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So what we see here is that he said, believe the Lord your God and be established. In other words, everything that we do in the body of Christ or in our own personal life first comes from the Word. And it establishes us in the Word and on a personal level. And we believe it, we attend to it, we meditate in it, we get faith put in our hearts through it. And then, secondly, believe as prophets and prosper. In other words, there'll be a word of the Lord through a, a five-fold minister maybe coming to you and you can believe that word and it'll finish the job for you if you act on it. Yeah. 
And so there's a combination of the fivefold working together with the Lord from the Lord, a word of the Lord. Yes. And I'm telling you today, this is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't get into fear. Don't get in, you know, if your bills are not being paid right now and everything looks bleak and sad and, and the situation looks like it's got you beat. Just start thanking God it's over with and, and that he's already whipped your enemies and by his stripes you're healed and, and start to tell him, Lord, you said I would prosper and be in hell. You said that you give me power to establish your covenant upon the earth, yes. Lord, and give me witty ideas and inventions. Amen. You said in your word that you would restore my fortunes and yes. restore all that I've lost. You said a sevenfold return comes to those who have sacrificed and been stolen from by the Amen. devil. Amen. 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 And you said to Peter, you said if you've obeyed in all, you get a hundredfold blessing, not only in this life, but the one to come. You said in, in Timothy, you said godliness is profitable, having the promise of the life that now is and the one that is to come. Praise God. You said charge those that are rich in this world to be careful and to be good stewards of the money that they have gained. Oh, so it's, it's a sin to be rich, huh? No. He said charge those who are rich to be careful with their money. Don't be fools. Don't squander it on stupid things. Amen. It's not that you can't buy a nice house or have nice cars or all that. But, you know, be careful. That's right. To make sure that money is, you're obeying God with your money. Amen. Listen to him first about what you want. There's been times where people have received a, an abundant blessing from the Lord. And before, and, and instead of stopping and saying, what do you want me to do with it? They take that money and they, well, I want to, and you know, this sounds weird, but they say, okay, I'm just going to pay all this debt off and get it all out of my life. But the Lord may want you to pay part of that debt off, keep part of it in the bank, and then sow some to the gospel. Amen. Yes. Maybe some, uh, an extra amount. And next thing you know, God will bring you an abundance and pay that debt off. Amen. Amen. You got to hear his voice. Don't just do what you think you should do because you heard some preacher say, do it all at once, you know. Do what God leads you to do. Amen. 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 The Lord... It says, go over to the fourth chapter of Luke. I'm just going along with the Spirit. Is that all right? Yes. Fourth chapter, Mr. Luke in the game. <coughs> Are you there? Yes, sir. Good. A lot of us are familiar with this scripture. But Jesus got up the first day uh, before he went out and preached the gospel to everyone else. He first came into the Jewish temple to tell him about the spirit that came upon him and that he was going to preach and, and heal and deliver. And it says here that uh, verse 17 in the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him and he opened the book and found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say the spirit's on me. The spirit is on me. And then it says because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Say to the poor. To the poor. Wow that's the first thing. Poor in spirit? Yes. Poor financially? Yes. yes. If you look that word up, poor, it means those that have a lack of wealth or health or financial problems. And then it said, to the poor, he sent me to proclaim release of the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who were downtrodden, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book back and attended 
and sat down and he said, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your sight. In other words, he's saying, I'm here, the word. And I am the deliverer. And I'm going to heal and I'm going to deliver. And that you're accepted, you're forgiven, you're elected into my kingdom. And that you're blessed now because I brought my blessing package with me. And that's healing, deliverance, safety, soundness, preservation. Yes. And, and to be free of all bondage and addictions and everything that hinders you. Yes, praise God. And so he's speaking here. He's saying, he's saying, he's saying you know, I'm coming right now. And I'm anointed. And there's a power of God that's on me to destroy the yoke of poverty over your life. If you let the anointing destroy the yoke. It'll come in and break that yeah. poverty mentality. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, so he comes and, and he starts delivering people. Um, he gets near a woman who has an issue of blood and she touches the hem of his garment and he turns around and she's been made whole of the blood disease that she had for 12 years and spent all that she had and got worse. She lost all her money and she did said that she was actually quite wealthy. And the doctors drained her of her money. Then she found out about God and turned to God instead of man. Yeah. And when she did, the Lord immediately, when she touched the hem of his garment, which represents the covenant place that covenanted around that garment, healing flowed out of him and healed her body completely. And he turned around and he said, Woman, thou art whole, go in peace, and behold of thy plague. Yeah. And we know that word there, whole, means <clears throat> shalom. Nothing broken and nothing undone. Which meant that he restored not just her health, but her fortunes. Everything she lost, he financially restored. And so, I'm trying to get us to start to think about prosperity. In Isaiah 54, it says, in larger tents and larger borders. And um, the Lord will cause you... To, to prosper and he will stretch you out he will strengthen you yeah. he will give you a capacity to expect yeah. beyond all you can ask or think a seating in exceedingly abundantly yeah. mentality yeah. now abundance means too much <laughs> excessive abundance means way too much wow. say way too much way too much. Say, way too much way too much I'm blessed <laughs> so we got to stretch out and and start thinking to uh, you know it said expand your tents or you know stretch out your tents that word expand means 